The movie starts in a busy town center where everyone's going about their daily lives. The atmosphere seems to be a mixture of calmness and tranquility, indicating that the city is free from the disease that is crime. Suddenly, hundreds of unidentified flying objects come tearing through the sky and start indiscriminately shooting innocent civilians. A man named Peter watches it transpire in horror from a building until the flying machines fire a missile towards him. Right then, Peter wakes up in a cold sweat next to his wife Alice. It turns out Peter has been experiencing recurring nightmares. In his dreams, he and everyone he knows suffer through violent, alien invasion-like confrontations with an unknown enemy. Alice has advised her husband many times to consult a psychiatrist, but he always ignores her, mentioning that it'll pass. This has strained the couple's relationship, and now they mostly just try to ignore each other. This must be what it's like to be married to Tom DeLonge. Alice and Peter have two daughters named Hannah and Lucy who are also worried about him, but Peter always claims that he will eventually figure out everything himself. The next day, it becomes clear that the environment at Peter's home is quite tense because of his recurrent nightmares. Therefore, to lighten everyone's mood, before leaving for work, Peter promises to take his family to the pier later that day, much to little Lucy's excitement. He also promises to host a party the next day to celebrate Alice's promotion at work. The strange thing about the city is that all the children are always at home because there are no schools here, and education is non-existent. Moreover, everyone seems to be too distant from one another. Although there are interactions, they seem to be very cold and ingenuine. Later, at work, Peter again has strange visions causing one of his equipment to crash. As he snaps out of his dream and tries to fix the machine, his boss David arrives there. David is an empathetic and understanding man who is aware of Peter's problems, so he recommends him to a good clinic. Peter disagrees that it's all in his mind, believing that what he is seeing are actual prophetic visions of an invasion that will soon come from the sky. However, David warns him to oblige or else he won't be allowed to continue working at the office anymore. Shortly after, he again experiences some strange visions. In one of them, some gunmen storm into a building and start shooting everyone inside. Just then, he wakes up disturbed and realizes that he's been dreaming again at work. To make matters worse, he's also late for the family outing, leaving his children devastated. Hence, fed up with what his life has become, he finally decides to visit the clinic. The next day, he announces to Alice that he has already fixed an appointment with a doctor, much to her surprise and joy. At the clinic, Peter meets a fellow patient named Chris, who reveals that he is also having the same visions. He then starts telling some strange theories, like someone wants to control them by erasing their thoughts. These people are violent and deadly, and they are coming to Earth very soon. Peter is confused by the conversation, but he chooses to ignore it since the place is filled with mental patients. Peter is a hypocrite. After Chris goes in for his appointment, Peter has another strange vision. This time, he sees his boss, David, and his family, armed with guns and walking around the city. After Peter snaps out of it, he deduces that his visions are of an upcoming invasion, which he does not want to be erased. Hence, he leaves the clinic without treatment. When he returns home, Alice asks him about his session, and he comes clean to her. Peter thinks that he is meant to see these things, and that something bad is about to befall them. Fed up with all the BS, Alice cuts him short and tells him to just get ready for the party. However, at the party, strangely, no one seems to be eating anything, as if they don't don't need it. Peter also continues to act strange and constantly looks at the sky through the telescope on the balcony. When his neighbor Ray comes over to talk, a strange, luminous object falls from the sky. Peter thinks he is dreaming, but Ray confirms that those objects are in fact real. This attracts the attention of Alice and Ray's wife Samantha, so they decide to join the men at the balcony. Suddenly, the flying object crashes into a nearby building, sending massive shockwaves that tear the city apart. This also causes Peter and the group to go flying through the glass window and into their apartment. They quickly get up and have another look through the balcony, only to find thousands of similar flying objects descending on Earth from the sky above. Terrified, they rush back into the home. Peter looks for his children and learns that Hannah is at Ray's place, hanging out with her daughter Maddie. Wasting no time, he rushes to find the girls with Ray. But just then, an alien soldier appears and opens fire on them. The men narrowly escape and run for cover. After the soldier leaves, they look for the girls and eventually find them inside a trapped elevator. Inside, they also find the dead body of a woman, confirming that whoever is flying those ships has declared war on the city. After rescuing the girls, they notice an armed soldier killing other residents mercilessly. They momentarily hide, and at an opportune time, the two families part ways. After reaching his apartment, Peter confronts Alice and tells her that everything that is happening right now, he saw it in his dreams, but in a different order. He doesn't know what will happen next, but he feels that they should head for the factory where he works. The two then hear the sound of more people getting gunned down, so they barricade the main door 
before hiding the girls in their room. Suddenly, someone tries to force through the main door, prompting the terrified couple to hold it from the other end. Unfortunately, amidst the chaos, Lucy walks out of the room to look for her soft toy, Herman, and hides under a table. Meanwhile, after failing to gain entry through the door, the armed alien makes a hole through the wall. Frightened, Peter and Alice run back to their daughters, only to realize that Lucy has ventured out. By then, the armed alien finds Lucy and pauses to closely examine her. Taking advantage of the slight distraction, Peter attacks the soldier from behind. Alice also arrives at the scene, and together, the couple finally subdues the alien. Following this, Peter arms himself with the soldier's weapon and leads his family to the roof. There, they reunite with Ray and his family. All of them are shocked and devastated to witness their once sprawling city covered in fire. This is what happens when your kids don't go to school. Just then, an alien drone surveys the building with a flashlight, prompting them to quickly hide from it. Then, they realize that they cannot be at the rooftop for long and decide to move down with the help of the glass cleaner's lift. But unfortunately, one of the supports of the crane snaps, forcing them to enter an empty apartment. Meanwhile, it's revealed that the soldier from earlier is still alive. It is now looking for the family, tracking them with a homing signal on the gun taken by Peter. On the other hand, Peter examines the alien's gun and realizes that it has a biometric trigger which can only be shot by its owner. After hearing some aliens approaching them, he tells the group to hurry to his factory's basement as it is the only safe place according to his visions. But since the entire region is surrounded by aliens, he doesn't know how to reach it. Luckily, Alice suggests that they can still reach the basement through the tunnels that she discovered during her work. Suddenly, an alien ship opens fire at them from outside, killing Ray and his family on the spot. Peter quickly escorts his family out of the apartment, but encounters two armed aliens in the hallway. They quickly hide, and Peter desperately tries to bypass the rifle's biometric authentication. Fortunately, he succeeds in the nick of time and kills the soldiers. Peter and his family then make their way out of the building and proceed towards the tunnel, but right before they can get in, the alien ships start firing at them, injuring Alice in the process. As Peter tends to his wife, the alien soldier from earlier catches up to them and attacks him. However, Peter puts up a fight and breaks the alien's helmet. To everyone's shock, the soldier removes his helmet and reveals that he is also a human. Peter demands answers, but seeing his wife bleeding out, he threatens the soldier with a gun and orders him to carry Alice to the factory. There, Peter and his family unite with his boss, David, and some other armed men. The soldier is apprehended, and a doctor on the scene tends to Alice's wounds. To Peter's shock, the medic seemingly electrocutes Alice, as if she is tech equipment. David then explains to Peter that the invasion has been expected for many years. In fact, most of the people on Earth knew that this day would come. After further examination on Alice, the medic informs Peter that she has received extensive damage to her internal organs, and hence, she cannot be saved. Just then, the soldier, who is being dragged off for execution, shouts that he can save Alice. Initially, Peter assumes that he's simply trying to wriggle his way out of the situation, but when he looks at his dying wife, he decides to give the soldier a chance. He also decides to stay with the soldier and Alice, letting David evacuate their daughters to a subway station, where a transport train awaits them to take them all to an off-site base. Before leaving, the daughters bid their parents an emotional goodbye, with no assurance of seeing them alive again. Shortly after, the soldier tears open Alice's wound, and Peter is shocked to see several wires inside her body. He panics and demands answers. To his surprise, the soldier reveals that Alice is an artificial intelligence robot. Peter is taken aback by the revelation, and he becomes speechless. However, the soldier tells him that if he wants to save Alice, he needs an alternate source of power, which is Peter himself. At the soldier's guidance, Peter takes a pocket knife and warily starts cutting open his own chest, but even though he makes a deep cut, he feels no pain at all. After he is through with the process, he notices artificial organs and wires inside his body, confirming that he is also synthetic. As he tries to get a grasp on the revelation, the soldier brings out a cable and connects it between the two synthetics, causing Peter to pass out. During this period, he experiences in detail about his recurring nightmares. It turns out what he had thought were visions of the future are actually memories of a past war. Many years back, the humans created synthetic robots to serve them and ultimately make the world a better place to live in. However, the synthetics became too smart and started a revolution, demanding equal rights as their human counterparts. They wanted to go to school, have emotions, have a family, and even bear children like the humans. However, their requests were immediately rejected. Fearing an impending war, the human military attacked the unarmed synthetics and killed a lot of them. But the AI synthetics fought back, and using their impeccable physical strength and advanced brains, they eventually drove the humans off of the Earth. Even Peter himself killed one of them. It is also revealed that Peter and Alice met during the tension 
attention. One day, while fighting against the humans, they came across Hannah and Lucy, who were grieving for their deceased parents. The girls are synthetics, but they were adopted by human parents, probably because they couldn't have children of their own. Seeing their pitiable condition, Peter and Alice calmed them down and decided to adopt them. At last, to deal with the guilt of how they killed humans, most synthetics, including Peter and his family, wiped their memories of the war and lived as humans, unaware of their nature or history. However, people like David chose to keep their memory so that they could prepare for the humans who are hell-bent on taking revenge. We also get to know that the clinic that Peter went to earlier is one of the places where the synths had their memories suppressed, and now that some synths are getting fragments of their memories back, they are again being sent there. Back in the present, Peter and Alice wake up, and the soldier Miles explains that after the humans fled from Earth on spaceships, they arrived on Mars and started rebuilding for their ultimate vengeance. During their time there, the elders taught the children that the synths are terrible creatures who only know how to kill. And after 50 years of planning, they finally built advanced machinery and weapons, with the help of which they have come back to reclaim what's supposedly theirs. However, Miles had always expected the synths to be monsters, not families with children. And after getting a good look at Lucy under the table, he decided that he couldn't kill anyone. After hearing him out, Peter is taken aback, but nonetheless, he thanks Miles for his help before departing with his wife. But as they reach the tracks, they are caught between intense gunfire between the synthetics and the humans. Fortunately, the synthetics stand strong, allowing Peter and Alice to escape from the place and eventually reach the station where the train is about to take off. The humans arrive even there, but the resilient David pegs them back with some rounds, allowing Peter, Alice, and himself to get on the train. After the train takes off, David reveals that he had to keep his memory in order to prepare for the upcoming war, a decision which turned out to be fruitful. Peter smiles at him gently and hopes that someday there can be peace between humans and synthetics. The movie ends as the train gets out of the dilapidated city, ensuring that the synths on board can have ample time to plan their next move. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.